Hey guys, welcome back to the other side of the coin. Look, over the past 24 hours, Fabrizio Romano, a very, very well-respected journalist, reporter, specialist in transfer market deals. You know, he's been uh, part of a particular podcast called The Beautiful Game Podcast. And he's talked about quite a few Chelsea-related transfer deals. But the one that really, really sort of stuck to me was his message about Kepa Aretha Balaga. Now, he was so confident and he was so confirming about this particular news. You know, he was saying that he's got, you know, he's been given words from Chelsea that Kepa is not going to be part of the Chelsea setup next season at all. Now, uh, we all know he's had a poor season and I guess this news is definitely not a surprise. But I just want to touch about the whole topic that for me, this has been such a massive decline. You know, it's a sad, sad decline, to be honest. You know, I've, I've all the, honestly wanted this particular player to do well. You know, last season, I guess the flaws were still there. But, you know, because of the euphoria of the whole, you know, winning the Europa League, you know, the new style under Sari, finishing the season off quite strong as well, I guess we probably didn't see the flaws that much as we are seeing them this season and there were definitely some really really big game big game performances from Kepa last season more specifically in in Europa League and also in the Premier League as well there were games where he definitely kept us in and obviously in the Europa League semi-finals he was he was massive for us so you know for, from that particular point I thought you know this player was just going to go get stronger and stronger, become that Chelsea number one goalkeeper like the likes of Peter Cech and Thibaut Courtois in recent times. But this season, oh man, it's just been such a traumatic decline in the way he can't command his box, the way he is so, I suppose, timid when it comes to set pieces. He doesn't want to come out. You know, Even at the end, in the last game where he featured he was getting screamed upon by his defenders which honestly was so hard to see because you don't want to see that happen to a professional player but that's when you know that your time is up uh, you know you've absolutely hit rock bottom when your when your own teammates are screaming at you in a particular match and saying kepa kepa and yeah i guess it, it's it's time that that he moves on for his own benefit to be honest i think you know, had it been an average season, I suppose he could have stuck around for another season. But it's just been such a dramatic decline that he simply needs to move on and find some, you know, another home, and hopefully, slowly regains his confidence back. Because statistically, oh, it's a nightmare, and obviously the high test hasn't been that kind either. Now, two particular goalkeepers that have been linked with. You know, this particular move, I suppose you can say, with Kepa not being in the setup, has been one of them has been Nick Pope. Now, you know, Nick Pope obviously plays for Burnley. Burnley's come 10th this season in the Premier League. But the thing about Nick Pope is, is an absolute shot stopper. Um, you know, I've watched, I watched a few, I mean, I follow Premier League. That's pretty much the league that I follow mostly. And I've come across a few Burnley games. And one thing about Nick Pope, and I guess it's the way Burnley set up. They, when they face all these top cl- top clubs in the Premier League, you know, they're heavily defending. But Nick Pope definitely is, is a massive, massive shot stopper. I think recently there was a game against, uh, I believe, Liverpool, where oh, it was just phenomenal. He was saving everything left, right and centre. Pretty much kept them, kept them in the game uh, with his saving and this has been an issue for us this season where we've let in so many goals. Um, you look at Nick Pope playing for someone like Burnley. You know, I think he's played about, what, 38 games, as I can see the stats now. You know, only conceding 50 goals. For some a side like Burnley, 50 goals is, to be honest, is not that much. You know, We've conceded far more than this. And uh, you, you'll all know Kepa's percentage is absolutely poor. And um, yeah, Nick Pope is something, is someone who, who definitely is going to be a shot stopper. And yes, he's he's around 28, 29, I believe. But yeah, goalkeepers can play for a very, very long time. For me, that's probably the right age as well. He'll, he'll, he won't be that expensive either. He's, he's going to be, I think he's started around some 
somewhere around you know 11 to 15 million or 15 to 20 million somewhere around that range and and if we're going for someone like Kai Havertz you know it's definitely a cheap option look I know we like to play from the back and he may not be accustomed to that but we need a shot stopper more than anything first of all and I'm sure he can pick up on um, you know, playing out from the back if Caballero can do that uh, which we've seen in recent times I'm sure Nick Pope can do that as well the other particular goalkeeper that we've been heavily, heavily been, you know, linked with is Onana. And this, for me, is probably the most likely one, to be honest. Him as well this season has played about 39 games, looking at the stats, conceding only 37, 15 clean sheets. Nick Pope, 15 clean sheets as well. And Onana as well, you know, is is on the cheaper side, Um and many, many rate him, to be honest. I haven't watched too much of him, and I've only seen him in Champions League. And to be honest, from what I've seen in Champions League, he seems like a decent goalkeeper. I know there's a lot of stats out there saying that he's, you know, one of the one of the best ones that, that have been in Champions League in recent times in terms of goalkeeper. And look, right now, anything is better, better than um, Kepa. So I'm all up for anyone, to be honest. If I was to choose between the two, uh, honestly, as I said, you know, I watch Premier League a lot. You know, I've I've always wanted Henderson. Um, if if we had to replace Kepa, but I don't know if Henderson deal is going to be that plausible, to be honest. So for me, Nick Pope is not that bad actually. But I guess you know, look, I don't know too much about him. I know many other people probably know a lot more. And even if he comes, I won't be that upset, to be honest. I think I think that would be a decent. Still a decent upgrade. Um, statistically, everyone will tell you that's a very, very decent upgrade. So yeah, guys, let me know what your thoughts are. Um, are you happy to see Kepa gone? Did you perhaps want him to get one more season just to prove himself? Or, you know, this is it. You know, you, like he needed to go, I suppose. And are you happy with, I suppose, the links with Nick Pope and Onana? Yeah, I don't think I'll black and Ter Stegen. Ter Stegen's have already extended his deal with Barcelona. I don't think um, I'll black is that possible if we go for Kai Havertz with the, the amount of money that he's demanding. So yeah, guys, let me know what your thoughts are. And until next time, see ya.